This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. As of today, my online reptile shop that takes in and sells exotic pet reptiles has received over 700 orders. And this is the video where I break down all the finances down to the penny. So if you're just here for the numbers, I have chapters on the video and you can just skip to the end. However, it's been a very interesting year and I hope that you kind of stick it out with me and re-experience it all. This is the third year I'm doing this. Uh, I did one in 2019 and 20. 20. So it's about three years of experiences and growth and about two hours of content. I am going to give a recap of those three years in about five minutes, but personally I would suggest you start with the first and go to this one. So if you want, I linked them in the description, uh, but if not, then just keep on watching. And here's a recap. In 2013, I started making mostly reptile videos on this channel. Naturally, I met a lot of like-minded people, mostly online, but one friend I made was actually pretty local, and we decided to start what eventually became Emerald Scales. We started working on this in the summer of 2017. Originally, our goal was to become like a very modernized, ethical, and just overall improved breeder where we could stand out from the bunch and use our YouTube channels to kind of leverage and grow as a form of marketing, basically. Turns out, breeding is kind of expensive and hard when you don't have much money. So a handful of people had been giving me their personal animals for me to just keep permanently because they would see my videos and be like, hey, I can't keep my animal because you take it. And I was happy like, yeah, this is great. But eventually I got too many. And so I started giving some to my friend who would take over the care instead. But eventually he ran out of space too. Now this was just a few animals a year and certainly not enough to make a whole business out of it, but it did give us another idea. So instead of breeding right off the bat, we decided that we could buy animals off of Craigslist from people that were selling them for cheap and had to get rid of them. Then we could make sure that they were healthy and almost like breeder quality, just making sure that you know they have a long lifespan ahead of them, they're overall healthy and happy animals that are going to be safe and comfortable with a new owner. And we could then sell those to people who are prepared for a new animal and most likely won't have to rehome it themselves. So in 2017, I had been making YouTube videos for about five years and I had made about $3,000 from doing so. So I invested invested 1,000 of that into this new project, and he invested 1,000 that he made from various gigs and jobs that he had. After about five months of work and preparation, we were able to launch in January of 2018. And by the way, all of this is documented because I've always made videos, he's always made videos, and you can go back on my channel, I'll link them again in the description, of basically everything that I just told you. We showed picking up the first animals, talking about our plans and everything. So I think it's cool to look back at, and I'm really glad that I recorded it. So if you're ever gonna start a project, 100% record all of it, or at least document it in like writing or journaling or something, because it's totally worth it. So the majority of our animals were just from Craigslist that we were making sure were healthy and selling. And once we were able to build a reputation and these people that were buying were really satisfied and saying good things, other people started trusting us with their animals if they had to rehome themselves. We were building experience shipping animals and became comfortable getting them shipped to us as well. So basically if someone said, hey, I have this animal I can't keep, we'd be like, well, we'd be happy to take it. We would cover all the fees and expenses for them to ship us the animal, and we would try to turn a profit when selling it to a new owner. Eventually this demand grew and they started covering the cost to ship and we would basically just get them for free and then again try and turn a profit. And this is what we did through 2018, still buying animals on Craigslist, still getting animals sent to us, picking animals up. If there was an animal available, we would get it. And through 2018, we just looked for every opportunity possible. Uh, if there was an animal on Craigslist, we'd try and get it for as cheap as possible. Uh, we'd even go to reptile expos and haggle and at the end of shows, we'd be like, all right, you got all these leftover animals, how many will you sell us for super cheap? And we'd just do everything we could to keep building this reputation and getting as many animals on our site as possible. But naturally things change. And by 2019, we had pretty different ideas of what we wanted to do and how we should move forward. So my friend and I decided to divide up Emerald Scales uh, where we both kind of benefit. So he got all the animals we had at the time, along with all the supplies and the Instagram account, because that was the main place we were advertising aside from YouTube. I got the branding of Emerald Scales and the website domain, emeraldscales.com, where I would just be starting fresh with having to get new supplies and new animals. A couple months later, I moved out of my parents and rented a home for the first time, and I gave about two thirds of the space to Emerald Scales animals. So I was living in one bedroom, and then the second bedroom, the living room, and the kitchen were basically just all animal projects. And by the end of 2019, over 200 animals had sold and we had made $30,000 in revenue. But I only turned a profit of $770. That was from 2017 to 2019. 
I only made 700 bucks. Now to recap, 2020. Overall, Emerald Scales was still losing money, and really the only benefit, aside from helping the animals, was they were kind of supplying me with content for my YouTube channel. Uh, I shrunk the team from about four of us, I think it was four at the time, to just two of us. And every moment that was not going into making a video, was going into these animals. It was definitely not very healthy, but we also didn't really have any other choice with how many people were trying to send us animals and basically throwing money at us and being like, please take the animals. And I didn't want to say no, but I did have to cut it at some point. I started charging additional fees uh, to try and increase the revenue and decrease the demand, but it really didn't make a difference. So I just kept increasing the cost to rehome to us. So over time it went from, we will pay you hundreds of dollars to you will pay us hundreds of dollars. And the demand was not shrinking because so many people were learning about Emerald Scales. And I really wanted to be able to buy a home because renting with animals really sucks. If I didn't have reptiles and I just made YouTube videos about, I don't know, gaming or something, yeah, renting would be totally fine, but it was just not doable with the animals. But the problem is I'm self-employed, which means that I need at least two years of solid income to show to a mortgage lender that I can not foreclose on the home I'm about to buy. <laughs> At this point, I only had one year of solid income but the idea of living in that rental any longer just made me go insane. The house was just this 40 year old piece of garbage falling apart. Everyone around me eventually learned that I had reptiles and they all hated it. I did not get along with my neighbors. I was not getting along with the landlord or the property managers and I just needed to get out. <laughs> so halfway through the year, I just said, screw it. And I impulse rented a new house. I had never seen this house. I had seen a couple of pictures. It was in an area that I had never been to, but I signed the lease without ever having seen it and without my first rental actually ending. And I loved it. But something that I've actually never mentioned is this second rental never actually knew that I had reptiles. But at this point, I just didn't care anymore because I just needed a new environment, a new space and more space as well. I was really banking on the fact that I could buy in 2021, hoping that my income from other revenue sources like YouTube would be sustainable and I would get approved for a house. So to prepare for this, I got as many animals into new homes as possible and decreased the amount that I was taking in. So by the end of 2020, over 500 animals had sold total. I hit $80,000 in revenue from Emerald Scales, but I didn't even turn a $1,000 profit. Emerald Scales was about to turn three years old with an astounding $1,500 in profit, and I needed a house as soon as possible. To get a home, I had to finish saving up for the down payment and submit all my tax information for 2020. Tax season is not until April, but my lease for this second house was ending in June and it takes a couple months to buy a house usually. I didn't know what I could afford yet till I got pre-qualified, which also I needed tax info for. So my accountant was like speed running through all of my finances and doing it as quickly as possible because he knew what I was trying to do and really wanted to help. But ultimately they can't cut corners and I, I was still gonna have to be patient and wait for them to be done, which was painful. I was very desperate to get rid of the animals that were at the house because the lease was about to end. I was gonna have to deal with all this house stuff, but I still had to make sure each animal went to a good home because one, that's important, for the animals and two that's important because that's one of the like keystones of Emerald Scales and to cut corners there would be not epic. So I did lower the costs of animals a bit just to try and entice people but I still verified everyone is normal and I was still letting people buy intake kits meaning that they're basically buying a spot in line so uh, when I get to their spot they can send an animal but I wasn't actually shipping any in until I was going to hopefully get a house. And I made that clear, but also I was unclear about how long it would be because I simply did not know. But I did this because I could use the extra money for all for the down payment because that's simply 200 plus dollars in cash just sitting in my account that I can apply. So technically I was kind of spending uh, people's money on the house before they actually got the service that they were promised. But worst case scenario, some of them ask for a refund and I find the money for that. So it wasn't the end of the world if they did ask for one. To make the outlines for these year in review videos, I also go through my camera roll, just like on my phone. Uh, <laughs> to show how tired I was, I woke up and discovered that the night before I put my milk in the pantry because I probably wasn't sleeping enough. I really did not want to increase the number of animals at the rental, but I did make one exception for someone with eight very healthy geckos. It was six leopard geckos and two African fat tail geckos because they had a medical thing that I really didn't want to have to make them wait and send the animals at a later time. So I made that exception, 
But I saw it as an opportunity for a video because I ended up uh, doing a video called like taking in and shipping off eight geckos where I documented the whole process of these eight animals while they were with me. The video did really well. It has like a hundred something thousand views now. So I think that was worth it on many accounts. It also snowed pretty, pretty cool and never snows here. Also a, sh a shipping issue that I've had for a while came up a lot where basically there's $50 shipping and $0 shipping. $0 is clearly stated if you're sending an animal. 50 is if you're buying an animal because sending an animal that, that price is built in to the intake kit. However, when people see a cheap animal that's one, five or $10, specifically aquatic turtles that I can't sell for profit or that very few people want so I simply have to charge very little for them, People always select the wrong shipping. And in January, I had to refund 12 orders because 12 individual people purchased aquatic turtles and selected the wrong shipping. One was ordered five times and one was ordered seven times. So that's just my little rant there. I still need to fix that issue. I'm not sure how. <laughs> we made $352 in revenue in January uh, from two yellow-bellied sliders, which were each a dollar, amazing. A Blanding's turtle, which is actually really cool, but nobody really wanted, so that took a while. A Russian tortoise, and a bearded dragon. A lot of the other animals I had here, I just couldn't sell yet, because they were a bit too unhealthy. They were mostly underweight, and I was trying to get them to gain some weight at a safe and comfortable pace before listing them for sale. I sold six intake kits, which was $1,310, which was pretty useful. And I had to refund $542 worth of intake kits and orders. These are people that no longer want to send an animal or people that purchased an animal and got declined. But I keep a 15% fee when I refund. As of now, it's 15%. I'm not sure what it was at this time, but I made $29 from refund fees, but I still lost money overall. Uh, ultimately, negative uh, $150 was the profit. Uh, so I had to rent a larger house for space for the animals. And also there's additional electricity and water charges, which I calculated out to $500 a month for the animals at this rental. Luckily I can write that off my taxes, uh, but it also does add an additional expense. Also, I spent $300 on shipping labels to send people animals. I paid $40 in transaction fees to PayPal and Stripe, which is the credit card processor. And at this time, I wasn't paying anyone for help because I was doing pretty much everything. So now on to February. Now February does have fewer days, only 28. So if there's a little bit less money, it's not too surprising. I feel like that doesn't really, that's not a great excuse. Started off the month well by dropping a heat lamp on the floor, which burned it. It um, definitely came out of my security deposit. Still had my Christmas tree up. You can see where my priorities were. And I won some PayPal disputes, which always feels kind of good. These are when people claim that they didn't receive the product or service they ordered when even they actually did. And it's a pain doing these PayPal cases, but winning them always feels kind of nice. <laughs> uh, I, I killed another cactus. The, the OG viewers will understand. <laughs> And aside from videos and animals, I really didn't do much. Ultimately, I was just trying to figure out what I'm gonna do if I can't get a house and I'm stuck in this rental for another year, because that's not really an option. I did play a few games as a little bit of free time, but overall it was mostly just YouTube and animals. So I sold and shipped nine, uh, two of the African fat tail geckos for 210 and $190. Four of the leopard geckos from the same person, which sold between 160 and 330, depending on sex, size, and morph. A uh, carpopython for 130, which is super cheap, but it was so big, I just had to get rid of it because I was keeping it in an enclosure. That worked, but it was just smaller than it should have been. So thankfully a good owner ordered and I was able to ship it off. Unfortunately, that shipping label was not cheap. Uh, six intake kits sold for $1,585 dues. And I didn't really buy anything this month other than some feeder insects and a few tubs at Home Depot for those leopard geckos. There was a profit of $2,494. Uh, the eight geckos really helped. Uh, thankfully, they were so easy. And if every animal I ever took in was as straightforward and simple and healthy and great as these leopard geckos that came in, I, I probably would have so much money at this point. But of course, so many of the animals that come in just have so many little issues, which makes things a lot more expensive and a lot slower. The year to date profit was 2,352 because I lost 150 last year, I mean last month, and uh, my all time profit was almost $4,000. But ultimately, I didn't care about the numbers, I just wanted a house. <laughs> and then March came along. I turned 21, uh, I had a really fun birthday, uh, me and Alice went shooting at a new range nearby. I tried alcohol for the first time, I got some wine at PF Chang's, uh, and also some hard lemonade. Uh, and instantly I knew I would become an alcoholic and have a drinking problem if I ever ordered it again. So I have not drank since. Um, 
buy guns, not alcohol. A lot safer and more beneficial. It was my two year anniversary of test driving a Tesla. I don't know why this is in my notes, but I care about it, okay? It's in the Teslas are kind of what motivate me to do pretty much anything. So shut up, I don't care. It was an important day. Also, I bought a trailer on Craigslist using a U-Haul uh, van in preparation for the house, which I still couldn't buy. Um, I spent an hour at the DMV just getting the stupid license plate for it, but I actually did a video on this. I really did not want to hire a moving company or mo uh, like moving vans or anything. So instead I was like, all right, I'll buy this cheapo $600 trailer on Craigslist and use this to move instead whenever that day comes. So yeah, that's a, a video on its own. Also on Craigslist, I'm, I'm always on Craigslist. Uh, there were a bunch of moving boxes for free. So I drove like 40 minutes to get them, but it saved me over a hundred dollars. And I actually started packing. I still didn't even know if I could get a house. I just knew that whatever I'm doing, I'm not gonna stay in this house. Cause also they were raising rent by like $250, which was insane. So I started preemptively packing, even though I didn't know where I was going. Two people requested refunds on my birthday, which was very offensive, but I got $70 in fees from those. So less offensive. I saw a Porsche Taycan for the first time in person. My God, that is a good looking car. Also, that's unrelated to this. Sorry, I was going through my camera roll, like I said. Uh, most importantly, my taxes were finalized, which meant that I could get pre-qualified. And I did, and I was really happy with what I could afford. I really felt like it should be easy to find a home, but dear God, 2020 and 2021 are like the worst times you could have possibly bought a house. It is 100% a seller's market where everything is super expensive and there are no houses for sale. Basically, I felt like I was gonna be screwed. So six days after my birthday, I started my house hunt. So I was on Zillow at like 4 a.m. I found some random house nearby. I was like, I guess we'll start with this one. I texted some random realtor whose name was on the thing and she responded like immediately. I don't know why she was up at 4 a.m. But uh, she was like, yeah, we can go in the morning. Uh, we looked at the first house for like 15 minutes and I was like, all right, cool. Guess I'll check out some other ones. But then an hour later, after seeing the home, I was like, I don't feel like doing this. So I just put an offer on the first house. It checked all the boxes. It, ha it was nearby, it had land, it was not too old, it was in my budget, it was big enough, and most importantly, there was no homeowners association. If you don't know what that is or you're not from the United States, just know, if you ever buy a home, do not, and I repeat, do not buy one in a homeowners association. The majority of homes in the United States are in them. It doesn't matter, I don't care how beautiful that house is. Do not buy it. If you do, just know that I am glaring at you from right here into your soul. And telling you that you're gonna regret every decision you've ever made leading up to this in life. And you'll be like, why did I buy a house in a homeowners association? Or maybe I'm projecting it, I just don't like them. But anyway, it was one of the longest weeks of my life waiting for this offer that I impulsively put in less than an hour after looking at the very first house on my house hunt which is exactly what Graham Stephan says not to do. He's like, look at every house possible. Sorry, Graham, I did not. I put an offer on the first house I saw. And this week I actually got another fine while waiting from the homeowners association of the rental house for $40 because my grass was over six inches. Oh God, how could I? It reached six and a half inches. It's not like I'm dealing with all these animals that you don't know is in the house and also, trying to buy a home and have a normal job and not just be an old person walking around and literally measuring grass and be like, hmm, that's 6.25 inches. That's a $40 fine. <sighs> I paid the stupid $40 fine and my God, I was really hoping that that offer would be accepted because I wanted to get out. <laughs> uh, six animals sold, I profited 1,000, but who cares? Because my offer was accepted. And I was like, oh my God, what did I just get myself into? I just signed up to hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. I'm gonna do a whole video about the house buying process because there is way more to talk about, but that's not really the focus of this video. And before we get into April, I wanna talk about CuriosityStream, the sponsor of this video. You can think of them as the Netflix or Hulu service, but for people into science, nature, animals, space, history, and more. The great thing is they don't sensationalize or make stuff up for the purpose of entertainment. And they have thousands of movies and TV shows that showcase true storytelling for an entertaining and captivating documentary experience. I love long form content that I can just throw onto my TV or my phone. And the show Life of the Limits showcases extreme habitats around the world. And it's like a modern high quality version of those addicting documentaries we used to see on TV. Another show you might like, Doug to the Rescue, just follows a dude saving dogs, but also with like drones and stuff. 
But one of my favorites is packing for Mars because, well, space is cool. And if you use code GOHERPING, you can get an entire year of streaming for $14.99. So if you wanna sit back, be entertained, and learn a bunch of stuff at the same time, I highly suggest you check them out in the description with code GOHERPING. So let's move on to April. I added discount vouchers to the site, which I thought was a huge brain idea. Normally when you place an order on Emerald Scales, you'll be spending a few hundred dollars. And if you know you're gonna buy an animal in the future, well, why not go ahead and buy a discounted coupon. For example, if you might spend $100 in the future, today you can spend $90 and get a $100 voucher. Or you can spend $200 and get a $250 voucher. It's just $50 free dollars you can apply to Emerald Scales, and I thought this would be a good way to raise money to help pay for the down payment. And I'll talk about how many sold at the end of this month. Aside from that, I stuffed all of my belongings into the garage, which honestly is 90% just Emerald Scales and Reptile supplies, because it turns out I don't really own anything. <laughs> aside from that, but I filled my garage with just all this junk because I wanted to make moving as quick and easy as possible because I needed to get out of this rental as soon as I got that house because the closing date could have become like one day or the day of my rental ending, which would have given me very little time to move. And also all I had was an eight foot trailer. But then I got a closing date. And before I tell you the closing date, I wanna tell you about the five most exciting days of my adult life in chronological order. So the date 420 has a certain meaning for many people, but it has a very different meaning for me because I dropped out of high school in 2017 and 420, 2018 was the day that I got my GED, which officially told myself I am never stepping foot in another classroom ever again. And then a just ultimate feeling of achievement was the day that I launched Emerald Scales with my friend in 2018 even though nothing had happened yet or succeeded yet. But after this six months of work that we had put in, it was just really exciting to see it come into fruition. I think that's a word. The third most exciting day of my adult life was the day I took delivery of my dream car. And to this day, I can still smell the delivery warehouse. I can still imagine it rolling in. That was in June of 2019. And then in July of 2019, I met Alice, my girlfriend, in person for the first time because we met online and a few months later, in person and i had never been more giddy and excited but the fifth most exciting day of my adult life was 420 2021 which i didn't realize until after that it was exactly three years to the day after getting my ged this was my closing date for my first ever home somehow i don't know how but this mortgage lender absolutely threw everything together so fast that it was done in less than a month, which normally it takes apparently like two months or something, but it was insane. My accountant did such a great job on the taxes. It was it just the timing worked out perfectly and I was so happy. However, I did have to lump most of my monetary assets together to be able to afford it because they actually did not accept the down payment that I was hoping to pay. So most of my stocks, a lot of my cryptocurrency, just stuff, I had to sell it all and liquidate it and dump it over to the mortgage lender. It was scary and confusing, but I did it. And again, this will be its own video. Ironically, this was also the first time my YouTube channel ever got a community guideline strike, or more specifically, a warning. I uploaded a fake YouTube short. Uh, I thought it was clearly edited, but apparently not, where I pretended to put my frog potato in the microwave because I was making a baked potato. I turned the microwave on with the potato out of the microwave, but it looked like he was in it. <laughs> and YouTube, now considers me an animal abuser. And the reason this is so ironic is YouTube is the only way that I was gonna afford this house. So it, the, the idea popped in my head of, if I lose my YouTube channel, am I gonna lose this house? <laughs> and it certainly motivates me to continue building other streams of income, like Emerald Scales. But then the day came, April 20th, 2021. Uh, apparently now my favorite day, but not for the plant. I threw everything I owned into that stupid little Craigslist trailer and just drove back and forth for three days straight, setting things up and getting everything out of that rental house and saying bye-bye to the rent life, hopefully forever. I did lots of very important things like painting my office green. <laughs> that was one of the first things I did, I don't know why. And I announced that animals would be shipping once again. I also started bringing them in again because all right, I've got this extra space. So I sold zero animals because I just didn't have time to list and sell more animals at this time but I sold an astounding one voucher. That's right, one person spent $200 on a $250 voucher. I thought I'd at least get like 10 and make like two grand from that up front, but no, it did not work. <laughs> I got 200 bucks though. 
I did, however, profit $3,000 because 14 people ordered intake kits. So now, from this point forward, the housing expenses are going to zero except for electricity. That's because, like I said, I had to rent a bigger house just for the animals specifically. And that money just goes to the landlord. It's not investing in anything, it's not building any equity. However, now, even though I did have to buy a bigger house for animals, whenever the day comes that I sell or rent out this house, the money that I'm spending on the mortgage is building equity. So for that reason, it's no longer costing me anything to house the animals, because any space they take up and any money I spend on that is going to be recouped and made back whenever I sell the home down the road. Unless the house market crashes, but that's not the animal's fault. So from this point forward, I estimate the electricity is about $50 per month based on my bill and the usage. Uh, so that'll be applied instead of the 500. I've done a lot of videos about some oopsies I've made and a new oopsie that I never did before is I thought I had already shipped someone an animal. I think it was a corn snake or maybe a ball python. I already thought that I shipped it to them. I accidentally fulfilled the order. The animal was still being cared for, but I thought it was a different corn snake. So basically they opened a PayPal case and they won because I totally thought that I had already shipped them an animal. Turns out I did not. I asked if they still wanted it. They said, no, go away. <laughs> so I had to resell that animal, but just, just a small oopsie, but still worth mentioning. And I started working on the property in the house. Uh, we got baby chicks off Craigslist for five bucks a pop. <laughs> I sold a bunch more personal belongings on eBay, a little more money and fewer items because less items is better, I feel. Ton my notes say tons of rainbows. What does that mean? I think there were just so many rainbows at the house. It was kind of like a fairy tale moment of like, I'd be pulling weeds, I'd start working on this little garden I was doing, and I'd look up and there would just be this big rainbow. <laughs> I was having a good time, okay? However, then um, my hard drive with eight years of videos and clips that I had nowhere else failed. It was a 10 terabyte hard drive and it just died. Thankfully, this is not sponsored. I don't care what company you use, but if you have hard drives, please pay for a backup service. Whether it's buying a second hard drive and using software, or like I was doing using a cloud. Because this cloud, which was only $5 per month, or I'll just say it, I use Backblaze. I don't care what company you use, but Backblaze worked for me. This $5 a month basically saved eight years of hard work. Uh, and so I just had to pay like a couple hundred dollars and they sent me a brand new hard drive with everything on it, except it got lost in the FedEx system. Uh, it, it was notifying me like, all right, it's here, now it's here, now it's here. And then all of a sudden it said it was at this random Walgreens, which was a FedEx drop-off center. So I went there and it was not there. However, the FedEx person that was picking up just happened to see what I was trying to do. And they said, hey, let me call this other FedEx driver. And so they did, and they actually found the FedEx driver with the hard drive on the truck. And this FedEx person escorted me to the other FedEx person. They did not have to do this. They were not obligated. They did not get paid to do this. I'm just, I'm always so impressed by FedEx's service. I mean, I've shipped literally over a thousand packages with FedEx and it's, it's the best service. I use UPS, I hate it. I've used USPS, I really hate it. I've used DHL, they suck. FedEx for me has just always worked out. So I wanted to give them a, a shout out for yeah. And a few weeks prior, I had recorded unboxing episode six. It had been a long time since I had done an unboxing video, and I decided to wait to post it until all the animals that were in it were actually available, or at least most of them. So in May, I posted the sixth unboxing video. There were really no animals available this month until the very end, so there weren't that many sales. Uh, spending wise, I spent some money on some new enclosures for animals, along with feeder insects and rodents for the snakes. Uh, I sold six animals. Thankfully, some were more expensive, like a $500 Mexican black king snake, which I did a couple videos on, a $350 rosy boa, and three leopard geckos, and a bearded dragon. I made $126 from refund fees and uh, $3,305 from 15 intake kits that were ordered. So it's basically almost exactly 15 kits per month are ordered, which is one animal every other day, which is a lot. I did spend $1,100 this month on emerald scales, which is a little more than usual, 300 on shipping, and then a few hundred on the rodents bugs. Some money at Petco, oh no. Sometimes I need something in a rush from Petco, like some mite spray or, um, a heat bowl before one of mine just went out all of a sudden. And a little bit of money at Target. I think that was for a couple tubs for supplies and some smaller animals. There was also a $320 vet bill for one animal, uh, but I still profited almost 
$4,000, which brings the year-to-date earnings just over 10 grand, which was the highest that I think I've seen. All time, that makes a profit of $11,786. Let me go, let me go show you the Rolex I bought with that. I didn't, I didn't buy a Rolex with that. But someday I'm gonna own the Cellini Moonface. But now it's time for June, and I was like, screw this, I need a break. I was still caring for the animals, I was still uploading the occasional video, but the weather was great, I was in my house, I wanted to just chill and relax and have some fun. And my version of fun is, uh, well, like, yard work, I guess. I started a garden, uh, which will also actually feed the animals, both the reptiles and the chickens and stuff, so that's a money saver, a little self-sustainable. Pulled lots of weeds, uh, worked on the grass, just some landscaping, and overall just cleaning up the property, because the previous people had kept some trash in some places and some old belongings, so I was going to and from the dump and I was having a grand old time. I splurged on something for myself, a one wheel, which I also got from Craigslist at a pretty good deal. Uh, you see that in a few videos, but I, I ride it pretty often. Uh, the chicks that we had inside at the time, because they were babies, they were finally moved outside and I built a pretty ugly pin for them, but it works, uh, using an old shed that was already at the house. And also someone rear-ended me. <laughs> However, I was towing the trailer. Had I not been towing the trailer, I probably would have needed a new bumper, but he ran into the trailer. The steel from the trailer did take a chunk out of the guy's bumper, but not my problem, and we both left. <laughs> Unfortunately, only three animal sales, all of which were toads for some reason, for a total of $240, because they're not very expensive. But again, 14 intake kits sold for a total of $2,970. I spent $600 on supplies. I bought a tub from Tractor Supply for some turtles, and I tried haggling, because they had a damaged tub, and I was like, how much you give me off for this damaged tub? And they were like, Nothing. None of our customers care that they're damaged. Are you buying it or not? And I was like, yeah, I'll buy it. But I tried. Spent some money at Target. Also PetSmart again for some, I don't know what it was. Uh, Home Depot and some more feeder insects because I don't actually breed feeder insects yet. I just can't be bothered. I spent $711 on shipping labels, which is mostly getting animals sent in. Uh, $50 again for the electricity estimate each month. And that is a profit of $1,900. And $34. So at this point, I really could not imagine ever dropping below zero and into the negatives again, unless I made a huge purchase, like a company vehicle or another building or something crazy. Things were looking to be pretty all right, and I had pretty high hopes for the end of the year. But then I entered July, where there were just too many intake kits. <laughs> again, one was being placed every other day for like four or five months straight. So I got two more at like the first day of the month and I just had to cut them off and pause because I had to catch up. Aside from reptile stuff, my garden absolutely exploded, mostly with squash, which I don't even like squash, but luckily the animals do. I got my dream lawnmower, also on Craigslist. <laughs> I made a video about picking that up and I sold my previous lawnmower on Craigslist, which I also had got on Craigslist. My life really does revolve around Craigslist. There were tons of house issues popping up at this point. Some of them I was getting fixed, some I was not. I was kind of just fixing the vital ones. I was doing things like duct taping random stuff just to hold it over until I could kind of wait and save up a little more money because I kind of dumped it all on the house already. I'll save most of that for the other video. And um, mostly I was just taking in animals. So I only sold three. There was a ball python for 190, an African fat tail gecko for 270, and a corn snake for 160. I spent $500 on shipping labels, $233 at Home Depot, and I only profited $200. That's because I paused the intake kits. So if I still had intakes open, it probably would have been an extra one or two grand, but I simply, the wait list was so long, I was not comfortable taking any more at this point. And now on to August. I got my biggest fee yet from a refund. Someone ordered a $600 ball python and then canceled it, which pocketed me a $97 fee. <laughs> Uh, someone kept reordering a free turtle, again, for free. They'd order and I would cancel it. Five minutes later, they'd order it again and I would cancel it. And I'd be like, apply shipping. And they'd be like, no, and they would just order it for free. I guess people at this point kind of just do it to troll me as well, because what's the harm in spending one penny or one dollar? I gotta figure that out somehow, I don't know. So originally, uh, my office was where it is right now, which is a spare bedroom, but I moved the animals in here and moved my office to the garage. I had an AC unit and I set up some walls and I thought it would be pretty cool. 
no, it was a terrible idea, but that's how it was for August. Did some more personal projects. I bought a ladder for the first time. <laughs> I cleaned my gutters, good times. Uh, painted part of the garage and got some new storage and organized it all in there, so looked pretty good. And so I still had a bit more storage than space. So I bought this $200 pop-up tent from some hardware store and it collapsed after getting rained on. It destroyed my pool table, <laughs> my Christmas tree, and a bunch of spare lumber I had because basically it, it was a hard rainstorm, it collapsed and all of it just got dumped in buckets of water and I didn't realize it for like a day or two because it was out of sight from the house basically. Also my lawnmower tire fell off. I was so badly looking forward to mowing the lawn this day and the whole thing just popped off. Turns out it had a tear in it and I had to get it replaced about a week later. So I also started my second vinyl wrapping project which I still have not finished to this day. And then I was tired of the garage, so I moved my office to the dining room because I don't use the dining room. However, that stupid, you know, the big chandelier was in the center, I kept hitting my head on it, so I zip tied it to the ceiling. I also split the Emerald Scales emails from one inbox, which at the time it was emeraldscalesexotics at gmail.com, which I didn't like partially because it very clearly said the word sex when you read it because Emerald Scales exotics, yeah but also because it was just too complicated when every single inquiry was going to the same inbox. So I think this was a really good idea. I, I'm actually happy I did it. I split it into three inboxes. There's contact at emeraldscales.com for all the general inquiries. There's orders at emeraldscales.com, which is only for people who have ordered animals and are getting animals sent to them. And then there's rehome at emeraldscales.com, which is only people sending us animals. I should have done this way sooner, but at least I did it. I sold 11 animals, which is a bit better. Three turtles, two blue tongue skinks, including a K Island blue tongue, which I think is the coolest of the blue tongues. I really liked it. Uh, two bearded dragons, a leopard gecko, a crested gecko, and a cave racer, which sucked. He was so annoying and he was so grumpy. I was gonna do a video on him because not many people get Thailand cave racers, but I just couldn't. I, I tried filming a few times and it, it, I just didn't like it. I was trying to force it basically. But I did own a Thailand cave racer for a period of time. So there's that. I re-enabled intake kits because I was starting to catch up and also the extra money's nice. Uh, I sold 12 intake kits, revenue of $5,200, which was one of the highest revenue months. I spent $1,488 on shipping and some additional supplies and I profited $3,700 and $11 this month. I mean, if I made 3,711 every month, that would be 44,000 a year profit, which is like above the average US income. But that is not quite the case. Now onto September, which marked four years since my friend and I first kind of started working on the idea and eventually turning it into what it is now. Uh, fun fact, originally it was named Into the Jungle Exotics which I'm so glad we didn't use that name. That name sucks. <laughs> Into the Jungle was taken on everything. That's also so broad and doesn't give any information or context. Into the Jungle Exotics is just so long. It's like a tongue twister. It was Into the Jungle Exotics for like two or three months. And then we changed it to Emerald Scales before publicly announcing it. And although from the outside, I mean, the numbers were looking good, things were moving, animals coming in, animals going out. Personally, I was just super burnt out. <laughs> I mean, that happens. People talk about being burnt out on YouTube all the time. Personally, I've never been burnt out on YouTube, which I'm really happy about. But Emerald Scales, oh my God, I have felt burnout I've never felt before. Just tired of it. Apparently, also someone told me about the term compassion fatigue, which sounds a little egotistical to say, because it's like, oh, I'm so, I'm so compassionate that I'm fatigued from being so compassionate. But technically it is a term that often people feel when working with animals and it, I feel like it described me very well and it still does. Um, you just get so tired and so exhausted and it's just the same thing every day and so overwhelmed. I felt like I was about to snap. So I just impulsively drove to the beach. It's like three or four hours. Um, I really didn't want to leave the beach. <laughs> I, was, I just didn't want to go back to all that work because even though it looked like things were going well, I was just not having a good time at this point. So to try and lower demand a little bit, I raised the price of intake kits, uh, just everything across the board, $30. It did not work. There was no difference in demand. People still kept ordering normally. I one wheeled a lot, which kind of is just a nice way to relax, even though I occasionally fall and feel like my knees are about to snap. Uh, still nice, 
My car went into service again. Lots of issues this time. I uh, cleaned up and organized my back porch because I had some storage there and I just got rid of more stuff and it was starting to look pretty good back there. I did have to do a partial refund, which sometimes I do. So say people are, so say somebody's gonna send two animals, but one animal they find another home for. Or in this case, one of the animals was, was a frog. It actually died right before shipping. So I gave them a partial refund for that because yeah, kind of sucks. The second frog is here now and it's really not healthy. So hopefully it'll survive, but we'll see. And I decided to keep the number of animals here overall just lower simply so it takes up less of my time and I can have more time to do things I want, uh, like videos, stuff around the house, sleep, <laughs> things that would just hopefully fix my burnout a little bit. I sold four animals uh, for $500 and 14 incates intakes for $3,000. <laughs> Uh, I spent 1755 all of which was on uh, shipping, basically, because animals were coming in. And also the usual transaction fees to PayPal and Stripe. There was a profit of $1,787, so down from last month, but I took in a lot more animals, so the shipping cost more. October. I got the first ever eggs from our chickens. They, uh, they're crazy strong eggs. They're like twice as thick as normal eggs, like from the store. And yeah, I don't know, it's very high quality eggs. So I guess I take that to mean the chickens are quite healthy. I can't taste a flavor difference at all though. A possum uh, ate my garbage. I was, all the cats were like staring at something. I was like, what is that? I left a garbage bag on the back porch. Turns out there's lots of possums and raccoons living here. So they're very cute, but I learned to not leave garbage out. A uh, Tesla safety store came out. I mentioned this because I was excited and I was like, oh, maybe I'll get full self-driving beta, where basically the car tracks how you drive and I'm a very safe driver. It's a score from zero to 100 and you need 99 to get into the, the, the beta thing. My safety score was 70. It says I follow too closely, I brake too hard, and I'm just a bad driver, according to my, my own car said that I suck at driving. Now I actually recorded unboxing episode seven this month but I scrapped the video because I just, I found it boring. So I've done, set, now I have done seven unboxings as of recording this. And for every unboxing I post, there's one that I delete. So a total I've filmed like 12 or 13 unboxings. Some of them just, I just didn't find them funny or interesting. So yeah, that's how it is though. Went to Ikea, that the nearest one is actually in Virginia. It's like a three or four hour drive, but uh, I don't know why this is in the notes either. Also, on the way back, I stopped to pee at a gas station and there was a hippo head in the gas station. I was, I was so tired. I was like, am I hallucinating this? No, there was a hippo head in the middle of a gas station. And it was this month I decided I'm going to speed run these intakes. Again, avoiding cutting corners as much as possible, but I wanted to just get as many animals here as possible because it's going to be too cold soon to take them in. And I don't want all these people having to wait the whole winter season before they can send me an animal. A lot can't wait, so I figured I would just give more space in the house to the animals temporarily just to get through because there are too many. 15 every month being ordered, I got work to do. So I shipped a ton of boxes out to them and then in turn, they would be shipping them back soon. Also, I was very behind with emails at this point. It was just me doing the emails. I have trouble finding good people to work with. I, I just don't, I can't read people well. I can't tell if we're gonna get along well. And overall, I just don't like it. So I was doing all the emails, which is a bad idea because the response time was slow. In total, there was well over a hundred emails sitting, but I just sat down and for like three days straight, all I did was respond to emails and buy labels and get things prepared. So I slowed down videos, which sucks because that's like super fun and also my income, but I just wanted to get this over with and rip the bandaid off and get all of Emerald scales in order as it should have been already. And I did, it took a long time, but I did. I disabled intakes again, and I told myself I'm not reopening them until I catch up 100%. Every single one of these animals needs to be sent in, and then I'll reopen them, which is a terrible idea revenue-wise, because yeah, I'm not gonna get that extra one to $3,000 a month from these kits, but I just didn't want the wait list to be like a year long again, like it had been in the past. I scared myself. I almost shipped the wrong ball python. There were a few ball pythons. I grabbed one out of the enclosure. I thought it was the right one, put it in a bag, put it in a box, packed the box, put on the label, and I just had this funny feeling that I did something wrong. So I unboxed it, went to the other animals, and realized it was the wrong ball python. So I caught myself that time, and I don't need another <laughs> wrong animal shipped experience again. I also started accepting pre-orders for animals this month. So basically the idea was that 
I can usually tell if an animal is going to be ready, but I still have that usual quarantine period where they sit with me for at least a month or more, normally five to six weeks, assuming it's completely healthy at the start, they still sit here for five to six weeks. But that just adds so much lag time because it also takes about two to three weeks to verify a person and ship it off to them, not including waiting for the weather to be okay. So I decided as soon as I can tell the animal's most likely gonna be fine, I'm gonna go ahead and list it and sell it, but mark it as a pre-order so they know they're not gonna get it for at least that four to six week period. But that four to six week period gives them time to prep an enclosure and figure out a good ship day. So ultimately it's been working out quite well and I think this was a good idea. It makes things more efficient without cutting any corners, which is pretty much exactly what I need to do for everything. I bought an insane number of shipping labels this month, which you'll see from my expenses. Uh, I played around with a few other video formats. I did one called this turtle delayed a bunch of planes at an airport or something. It took me all day to make that video. I basically went through Google News using like reptile terms and to try to find an interesting story and then turn that story into a short video. Uh, I had really fun. I thought the video was good, but it just performed terribly. Sadly, I didn't make any money and not many people watched it. So I did try a few other formats, um, which some do well, some don't. So it's fun though trying around. So at the start of October, there were 60 unfulfilled orders, meaning that these people placed an order but have not been given their product or service yet. Now total, these 60 orders equaled $12,000 in revenue. So it was really important to fulfill them so that people don't want to get refunded because that would be refunding up to $12,000 if say everyone asked for a refund. So that's why I spent just a couple weeks just trying to get everything in order possible. And by the end of October, there were only 20 unfulfilled orders, which equaled 5,000 in revenue. So that was $7,000, like locked and loaded, good to go, don't have to refund it unless something else happens, but most likely not. So in the in a couple of weeks, I fulfilled 40 orders, which was mostly people sending in animals. There was $2,600 in revenue, but $3,101 in expenses. I sold six animals, five intakes before disabling the intakes, and I spent $2,764 just on shipping labels. I am single-handedly keeping FedEx alive. So ultimately I lost $500 this month, but it's cause all these labels were purchased. November, tons of labels and tons of animals. That's all the month was. However, this gave me the opportunity to reshoot unboxing episode seven, which part one is out and part two I'll put up soon. So a couple weeks probably. I built a wall in my garage, which I also turned into its own video. And the goal with this was to move animals from inside to its own little mini warehouse in my garage. Uh, the wall made things insulated. It had its own air conditioning and heating with some units. I even installed, um, like a, a fire detector and smoke detector. It's got lighting, it's got heating, and it should work out a lot better. And I'll probably show more of that in the future. I also drove to get a tegu, which I rarely do, but uh, I, I made an exception and someone somewhat local had to rehome an adult tegu, which is currently on the site. And instead of paying for an intake kit, they offered to give me their eight by four by four foot enclosure, which is worth over a thousand dollars. So I have not posted that video yet, but it's also one that I'm working on because uh, I recorded picking that tegu up. So the first half of the month, very few videos were posted on the channel. Uh, but I did spend a lot of time lining up more sponsors because they really helped make a big difference because just ad revenue is not always the best way to make money on videos. So the second half of the month, I recorded a ton of videos that I would be posting in December and stuff. And there were no animals coming in because I was out of space. I also couldn't ship anything because it was too cold, <laughs> which really sucks how much weather dictates emerald scales. So I sold five animals but couldn't ship them yet. Zero intakes, which was $1,620 in revenue. I spent $3,100 on labels and supplies because I did the Home Depot wall and stuff, which was, um, I mean, not free. It was about 500 bucks. So sadly, I lost $1,500 in November, mostly because I couldn't sell too many animals yet because they had just come in and they got to sit for a bit. I was doing some pre-orders, but they weren't all up in November and also no intakes because I had to catch up. Which brings us to December, which was, I mean, started a few weeks ago. <laughs> On a personal note, I decided to kind of revive my Lego interest. Basically, I started YouTube 
uh, by watching and creating Lego stop motions when I was like nine or 10 years old. And I started rewatching some and it really made me want to try again. So I don't have any complete videos, but I went to my parents' house, picked up all the Lego that I've uh, accumulated over my childhood basically. And I spent like a week uh, of free time that I had just sorting them and organizing them. And also a lot of Lego will turn kind of yellowish uh, from either oxygen, but you can actually restore them. It takes a while, but I was basically restoring my old Lego and sorting them, so that was fun. So also, when I built the wall in my garage, I actually broke my garage door. I had the ladder propped up underneath it, which is really tall. I closed the garage door, and the ladder snapped the garage door completely off. So I had to get it repaired by a professional, because it's kind of risky to do that yourself. And that was $400. <laughs> Uh, that was not an Emerald Scales expense, but still an expense. I found even more house issues this month, which I'll get into later. Just recently, I finally got some more assistance with Emerald Scales, this being with emails. I mentioned in a podcast on Patreon that I do, it's just like an hour of me talking about once a week, and uh, someone in the comments was like, I could help with emails. And I decided when I used to hire people, I would do it the classic way. I'd open up applications, you submit a resume, you answer questions, I interview online, then I interview you in person, then I pick you, you get officially hired, but it just never works out. So I decided to just do the total opposite. And when someone said, hey, I'll do your emails, I just said, you know what, okay, I'll just pay by you money. And so far, it's actually going all right. So that's, that's what we've been doing. Uh, I haven't been doing as many emails, so she's been doing it, I just pair hourly. And so at this point, we're basically caught up to right now. There's about 30 intakes still waiting to ship in. Uh, not as many as I would like, and I can't ship any of them till after Christmas because it's too cold and also the holiday rush of packages. I also can't ship anything out, which there's currently eight animals sold. Uh, for $2,250. Three ball pythons, one hognose for $510, which sold immediately. And I'm wondering if I sold it for too little money. One Kenyan sand boa, one Nicaraguan boa, and a corn snake. But I have not been able to ship any of these out yet, which kind of sucks. Zero intakes, because they're still disabled, because I'm still catching up, because I said I'm not re-enabling until 100% of them are caught up. And I've still got about 25 to 30. And that brings us to right now <laughs> in 2021 i earned seventeen thousand five hundred and twenty dollars which brings the all-time profit since 2017 when we first came up with this idea to nineteen thousand and seventy seven dollars of profit is this much no but this is a profit increase of two thousand percent since last year so basically, 2017 to 2019, 700 bucks. 2020, 700 bucks. 2021, 17,000 bucks. <laughs> so it's a big difference and it feels pretty good. But why is it so different? What, what exactly did I do? Well, I have a list that I'm going to read now. First of all, no rent allocated to animals saved me $4,500 because again, any money I spend on the house and the mortgage, I'm gonna recoup. Unlike the rent that's just disappearing and going into the landlord's pockets. Also, I increased prices, but the demand did not go anywhere. I also have been avoiding the deathly sick animals. I just simply have to decline them and say, sorry, but we just can't take it. And although it sucks to have to do that, I know that most of these will not survive shipping. Those that are local might not even survive, period. And I just simply don't have the time or resources to do this right now. So I'm just avoiding the sick animals and trying to focus on getting healthy animals good homes versus trying to rehabilitate and save these really sick animals because it's just not the right direction to be growing right now. I had to purchase almost no supplies because I basically built up all the supplies that I needed over the past few years and I don't really need anything else. I can just reuse enclosures and tubs and heat lamps and stuff. I mean I have to replace EVB bulbs and food, but for the most part, I have the heat tape, I have the thermostats, I have the shelves. I did buy a couple like extra shelves and stuff this year, but overall, I have most of the supplies. Also, I simply made fewer mistakes um, starting out. We made mistakes varying anywhere from a $10 mistake where we input the wrong dimensions on a shipping box and it costs more to a $500 mistake or even a $1,000 mistake with different things that we did. Um, so I simply did not make that many mistakes this year. 
which simply cost me less money. I've also simply been a lot more efficient with everything from the animal care and the cleaning, being on just like a system like, all right, do, 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 like cleaning super fast. And also the side of customer support, simplifying the emails, using lots of templates, lots of shortcuts, and just streamlining everything, saving more money, meaning I can pay for less help, and things just happen more quickly so we can take more animals. So yeah, I think th those are the main reasons. Now for some interesting numbers. So in 2021, there was $38,819 in revenue, which is an average of $3,200 a month in revenue. $17,000 of that revenue is from selling animals. But here's the really interesting number. 21,700 of the revenue is from intake kits. The amount of money that I spent on Emerald Scales period was $21,200. So the intake kit price almost perfectly within $500 covered every single expense for Emerald Scales of this year, which is just kind of cool. It's like, all right, I feel like I picked the right number. However, I do think I will raise it a little bit more because why not? There's simply way more demand than I can handle. I might as well try and cash in on that. So yeah, 21,000 in expenses. Uh, that's an average monthly profit of $1,460. I estimate I spent about 500 on electricity bills just for the animals. This might not be perfect, but I tried to get as exact as possible, and I think that it was about $500. So before disabling the intake kits this year, over 100 orders were placed to send animals. And of course, I took in most of those, but still about 25 to 30, uh, still hanging out and waiting for the weather to get good. So as of recording this, there's 11 animals here that have already sold that I just can't ship yet because of the weather. And there's six animals currently for sale on the site. Uh, these could sell, of course, within the next week or two before the end of the year, uh, which could push the lifetime profit to over 20,000, but haven't quite hit it as of recording. So Emerald Scales launched 1,418 days ago which is an average profit of $13 a day since the day of launch, which I know isn't a great way to look at it. That's $414 a month profit since launching, but I still think it's a cool number to throw in there. So I went back to watch the previous year in review videos. The very first thing I noticed was my health difference from 2019 to 2020. I had gained weight, which for me is a good thing. And also my face was just less broken out. I mean, it's still kind of broken out, which of course that's just natural, like when you're a teenager and into your 20s, but also I think it is a health difference with stress and stuff. Um, I look a lot less tired, and overall I just looked happier from 2019 to 2020. So it'll be interesting to look and see how I look now. I don't think I've gained any more weight yet, but I'm, I'm trying. I'm doing my best. But I think the biggest reason that I had that 19 to 20 difference uh, was because I got out of that house. <laughs> and also I downsized and I spent more time on videos. I also improved my diet and I slept more, but totally I think the biggest factors of my personal health and like physical and mental was getting into a better house, which at the time was a rental, but now this house, which I'm also very happy with, even if it has a lot of issues, but also just downsizing animals. There were just too many and I just don't want to be surrounded by animals. I don't want all my time to go to the animals and I want to make videos. That's what makes me happy. So also sleeping more is nice. I sleep a lot right now. So two years ago this week, I said that I hope two years from now, I will still have any form of income. That was my goal. So I hit my goal from two years ago, which is to not be broke. <laughs> One year ago this week, I was actually quite disappointed with the numbers and I hoped that I would have at least hit 5,000 in profit in 2020. Didn't hit it then but at least I made up for that now. So as of today, um, I do plan on keeping the number smaller and more manageable. So yes, if I scaled Emerald Scales up, I can pretty much calculate how much I would make. If I doubled it, maybe I'd make $37,000, $38,000. If I tripled it, maybe I'd make whatever that math is, which I don't know, let's just say $50,000. I just don't think that's the way to do it for me or for my happiness or my enjoyment. I do think I will consolidate most of Emerald Scales work to the warmer months because I just can't do much during the winter months. Last year, I wanted to build a team that's bigger, but I just don't want to now. In 2022, I want to avoid a large team. I want to just work with a couple people, which right now it's literally just two with editing and emails. And I really like that. Maybe a third person at some point, but I want to keep it small 
and um, mostly digital because I don't like working with people in person that much. <laughs> so I, I do want to keep things small, but I don't want 2022 to be stagnant. I really want it to be a year of YouTube for me. Uh, having a YouTube career or whatever you want to call it is generally not a forever thing. Yeah, there's certain creators that have seen success for quite a while and continue to, but there's others where most of the time you get this kind of gradual mountain of growth and success and viewership, and then it just declines over time. YouTube channels don't have a very long lifespan. That's not saying I want my lifespan to be short. I hope that my channel can be a thing. I'd love to make videos. Like right now, the idea of making videos through all my 20s and into my 30s sounds great. I'd be totally happy to do that. Is my channel going to stick around that long? I have no idea. Maybe. But I really want to cash in, not just monetarily, but cash in enthusiastically and take advantage of the enjoyment I get out of it. And I just want to make so many videos. If I had unlimited time and resources, I could post a thousand videos. Like there's so many ideas I have. So for 2022, I'm thinking to set a goal of 150 videos. Not 150 videos that are just videos, but 150 high quality videos that I'm happy with and I think are interesting and engaging and something that I want to show off. So not just spamming tons of videos, but I think I can do it. We'll see. That's three videos a week. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I can do it, but I have so many ideas and hopefully I can make it work. We'll see. I won't force it though. That's just a goal. So when it comes to goals for Emerald Scales, I really want to focus on the healthy animals. Those animals that simply need to be put in a new home that I know I can do and take a chunk of profit along the way. I think that's what I'm best at. I want to avoid rehabilitation and I want to avoid the sick animals because naturally they're still going to be sick animals. They're still going to be vet bills. They're still going to be time consuming, but I'm going to focus as much as I can on the healthy ones. I don't have crazy big goals for Emerald Scales in 2022, simply because I do have limited time and resources. I will 100% do another year in review. And I even said it last year, if you told me that I'm gonna be doing Emerald Scales work every day of my life for the rest of my life, I'd be like, no, I, I, I literally can't. <laughs> uh, too much of my time goes into it. And also here's the thing, like, yes, my interest in reptiles has gone down. I've been very public and honest about that. I don't feel a reason to hide it. And I think that's just normal. You change interests. I am very surprised. I still love YouTube as much as I did 10 years ago. I was 12 years, well, 11 to 12 years old. I'll be 22 in a couple months. But um, I was this little kid, not even a teenager yet, with totally different goals and aspirations and interests. And reptiles are just one of those, along with YouTube. It just so happens that YouTube and making videos has stuck, but reptiles has naturally declined. Like, take something that you liked. If you're in your 20s, take something you liked when you were 10. How many of your interests are you still actually into? Maybe some of them, maybe all of them, but most likely none or just one or two. I mean, when I was 10, I wanted to be a magician, and I spent so much of my time in magic. But the idea of doing magic and performance and magician-based entertainment now is like the worst thing ever. I have absolutely no interest in being a magician. So I'm very grateful that I did not become a magician because I would absolutely hate my life now. Even the Lego stop motion stuff. I adored Legos and I still do, but not at all to the same extent. I have zero interest in ever doing anything Lego related as a career or financially. I still think they're fun. I'm still gonna work on some stop motions now. If I complete any, maybe I'll show them to you, but maybe what I'm saying. Reptiles are simply one of those interests that I got into as a kid. Sure, I still enjoy aspects of it. I still really like some of the animals. They, I have personal animals that I still really care about, but it's, I just, can't, I can't force a passion and it's not my biggest passion. And even if it was my biggest passion, working on Emerald Scales is only partially about working with animals. Most of it is logistical, technical, behind the scenes, figuring out issues, while the more straightforward and easy stuff can be outsourced to other people. So, that's how it is. And ultimately, I wanted to have an end goal of, all right, this is what I want next year to look like. But for animal scales, I just don't have any goals and I don't want to force any goals. So I'll keep you updated. But for the end of 2021, yeah, I went from making a couple hundred dollars a month from this project to 17,000, which, or 19,000, I guess. What can I, I can buy like a, I don't know, Honda Civic. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, that covers a decent amount of my mortgage. Like that's, that's cool. 
Uh, but that's, that's not the goal because ultimately, Emerald Scales, still to this day, is primarily successful because of YouTube, which is ironic because I was actually going to use YouTube to leverage Emerald Scales. Turns out I ended up using Emerald Scales to leverage YouTube. The unboxing videos would not exist without Emerald Scales, and the unboxing videos have millions of views each. It's crazy. Um, and a lot of my other videos are based on the animals. So I'll continue to make reptile videos. I have so many other video ideas. I did say originally that once I outsource some more work, I'll start a second channel. The more I think of it, I might just stick to this channel, but just do more non-reptile videos. I mean, if you search my channel, I have like 500 videos. I would say maybe half of them are reptile related, maybe more. I, I try to always incorporate a reptile, but a lot of times it's like a reptile will be in the title, but the video is not actually that related to reptiles. <laughs> Ultimately, this might not have made much sense at the end what I'm saying, because I don't really know what my goal is and I don't want to force one. But what do you think? Is that what you expected? Is it more or less? Overall, I'm feeling good because the house stuff is gone. I moved so many times. I moved in 2015, 2016, 2017, 2019, 2020, and 2021. My family moved around a lot for a bit, and then I moved around a lot for a bit. And now I can just stop and chill and just work and work and work a lot more on stuff that I want to work on. Thank you so much to everyone on Patreon. You've been a great, I mean, it's just a cool community. I like being able to post the podcasts and having just a few people listen is actually kind of nice. Creating things with, and knowing that not tens of thousands of people are gonna see it, is actually kind of nice sometimes. Um, it's a tight-knit community. I'm able to just chat with a couple of you at a time. I can answer questions or whatever you want to talk about, so. Yeah, I appreciate that. And of course, monetarily, Patreon is a great little backup of a few hundred bucks a month, and I really appreciate it. So if you wanna join, it's five bucks a month. Uh, you get access to a private Discord. You can message me personally. You get my Discord username. I won't like do voice calls with you, but you can still message me if you want. Um, you also get early access to some videos. You get discounts on Emerald Scales animals and early access to Emerald Scales animals as well. So you can check that out. I've got lots of stuff in the description, probably lots of related videos. Also, before we go, I almost completely forgot to mention, well, I did forget to mention, that's why I'm adding it now. The Go Harpeen Plush, the first one. The unboxing box, which you might've seen in some recent videos, uh, as of recording, they're still available. Over half have sold, but I've still got some left. So if you're interested, you can go to goharpeen.com and it's a limited time run. And um, yeah, if they sell out, I'd love to make another plush in the future. But right now, this is what we got and I think it's great. And thanks again to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring this video. You can check them out in the link below with code GoHerping. That's less than 15 bucks for one year of streaming. I also like doing the long form videos and I like watching the long form videos of other people because I can just throw it on and work and listen to it while driving, listen to it while cleaning, whatever. So hopefully you enjoyed as well. But thanks so much for watching my videos. And if you purchased anything on Emerald Scales, thanks for that. Um, yeah. We'll see what 2022 brings. That'll be it for this video. I'm Alex, and thanks for watching.